Thank you for joining us for this Finding New Meaning After Diagnosis webinar. This webinar will begin immediately with questions from our moderator asked of a panel of people who live each day with vasculitis. Experience when things start shifting, do you feel sometimes you feel foreign from yourself or like the strangeness of not recognizing you or does it also maybe strengthen your knowing of who you are in certain moments? Does anyone want to answer either part of that, that question? Well, I, I mean, I, I can jump in and then I'll let yeah, you sure. that, that know. I was just, I was just going to add that I, um, I was able to get a lot of myself back. Uh, I, I want people to know that because I'm 15 years in this journey and I know some of you are in two years and one year and three years. And I, I really, I, I'm very happy with who I am now and, and what I'm able to do. Even, even this last um, flare that I was in, I was kind of shocked by it after nine years of being in remission. <laughs> but um, it, it does change you, but it, it doesn't, that's not necessarily bad. I guess that would be my perspective is that I, I do so many things. I'm so privileged of all the things that I get to do. Um, I, I get to interview a lot of doctors. I'm the webinar host for the Vasculitis Foundation. So I get to interview a lot of doctors and patients and and um, I, I have a whole different kind of life. And I, I don't, I, I don't, I will never say I enjoyed those years, but I, I think they taught me a lot. Mm, I have a whole different kind of life. Yeah. So Jen, I'm going to let you answer. And then I see Brandon has been able to hop back on. So we'll, we'll hear a little bit of Brandon's story in a moment. But Jen, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I think you asked her if you feel like yourself or not. And I would just say, like, physically, I felt like an alien on all that prednisone. And I still don't look <laughs> the way I did before I was diagnosed. So it was really like looking in the mirrors. I didn't recognize myself for quite a long time. Now I'm just starting to do it. Well, and this is, and maybe this is being stereotypical, but I feel like, especially as, as a woman, there's all these stereotypes around what you should look like. Is that hard? Like body image shifting? I found it really hard as a teenager growing up with all the messages about what we're supposed to, to be as women uh, back in the like 2000s. It, there wasn't as much around body acceptance out in pop culture. It, it was really challenging. It was, and, and therapy, I am a therapist now that's my job, but I didn't have access to that when I was a young person. Uh, so I found that really hard. And like, I, I didn't want to take the prednisone when I found out that was the treatment. So I was really relieved to have the diagnosis, but when I found out that was the treatment and I'd already been on it for some of the other issues, I was just like, no, there's gotta be something else. But back then there really wasn't a lot. And, and with how sick I was at that moment, that was the best option. So it was really challenging. Yeah, I'm going back to Greg's comment in the chat, like friend or foe, like prednisone being, you know, sort of double-edged sword or <laughs> can go both ways. But um, before we keep moving, Brandon, I'm, I'm glad you were able to jump, jump on with us. If you can take a couple minutes to share a little bit about your journey, what your life was like before vasculitis, and then how it shifted in, in uh, immediately following your diagnosis. Yeah, so um, like Stacy, I was, I mean, I wasn't quite as young as Stacy, but I was, I was a youth and I was, was in college like Heather. Um, so I started in my late teens with, with problems <clears throat> and then was diagnosed uh, at 21 uh, uh, with uh, GPA back in 2008. So I've, I've, while I might still be young and in my 30s, I've spent um, at this stage about half my life dealing with this disease. So, um, it's it, at times still really hard for me to honestly uh, remember what it was like beforehand, you know, um, you know, I, I started with problems when I was 19 or 20. Um, and I was, uh, I, I've been a runner my whole life. Uh, I was, uh, you know, a pretty good high school runner, got the chance to compete in college. And, you know, my, uh, into my sophomore year is when things sort of started derailing and, you know, uh, it took about six months after the the really bad symptoms started showing up um, for me to to land on a diagnosis, and then you know another year, year and a half before I was into remission. But um, I was luckily able to to get back to running and competing, and uh, I've I've had a lot of ups and downs with it. You know, I've I've had periods of uh, really really good health where you know. 
it surprises most people that I walk around with a, you know, potentially life-threatening disease and a rare autoimmune disease. And there's been times where I literally couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't get out of bed or walk around the, the house and neighborhood. So, um, you know, the, this whole victory over vasculitis thing was sort of, I guess, to kind of bring me into what, what's, you know, kind of gotten all of this going and offering all these resources is this victory over vasculitis thing started as an awareness campaign back in 2016 that was sort of surrounded, um, surrounding my running. Um, I was training to compete at the Olympic trials in 2016, uh, to, try to get a chance to, you know, it was, it was a chance to, to represent the U S at the Olympic games. Um, I didn't make it. Um, but you know, uh, I've, you know, <laughs> I had to hang up the spikes here recently as I, as I've entered middle life and try to figure out what's, what's next for, my, for myself and, um, my career, because this is all I'd literally focused on was my health and, and running. So, um, it's been incredibly rewarding these last you know, this last year, kind of putting this whole, turning it something that was an awareness campaign into a, a program that's got other people involved. And it's not just uh, what I call brand and fatigue. Uh, so, you know, my, my story has been shared enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy now that we have so many incredible people with amazing stories that um, also have incredible skills and gifts themselves to, to helping people. Um, and that's ultimately what this is. This this program's about is is helping people and giving them the the tools that they need to to survive because um, it is all of these things all of the stories that each one of um, our presenters have have presented tonight like we've all gone through all of that at different times and so um, from the emotional side you know we've all been through the really tough parts we've all been through through the parts where you know um, you feel like you've learned and got a you know, a kind of a special outlook on life. And we've all made some incredible connections. And um, I've, you know, I've gotten to meet some of the the smartest doctors on the planet because I have this <laughs> really rare disease, but I got to meet some, talk to some really cool individuals and um, develop a, a set of friends that I have that um, despite the people around me, as far as my family and my partner and my, you know, the people that um, have helped keep me alive. Um, I've got a, a close group of friends that I can really rely on, especially when stuff's tough. Um, we can all answer those late night phone calls and text and, and, and know that like, it's not gonna, not gonna ruin somebody's, not gonna ruin somebody's day. It's sort of, I joke, it takes a lot to kind of move the needle with a lot of us. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's incredibly powerful to, to, to have, friends like that, that, you know, you can call and just be like, you know, stuff's bad today or right now. And, you know, the prospects might not be um, great and, and know that they're not going to, they're not going to blink and they're not going to flinch. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I feel incredibly lucky to have that. And it's all been, it's all been because of, of, of the Vasculitis Foundation and, and this campaign that I even got involved in. I often tell people I'm involved in this kind of for the selfish reason of wanting to be like a flag bearer that could inspire other people. But um, the stories I've met and the people that I've um, gotten to befriend have, have had. I'm really glad that you've been not only willing to share your story, but sort of tending to other people's stories and helping share them as well. So people feel less alone. And I think you bring up I mean, a bunch of interesting points, but especially it's very dramatic in, in you. You're in trained to be the Olympics. That's something that consumes your whole life. But I think everyone has that in their own ways, whether you identify with a certain career or a certain trait or whether you were, you know, what a physical thing that you do or a hobby. And then when you're, you know, you get a diagnosis like vasculitis, some of those things shift and therefore the way you have to identify shifts and then perhaps the way other people or expectations of what other people think you, you know, what they always think, Oh, Kathy's the entrepreneur or, you know, Heather's the whatever it might be. 
Um, so I want to I want to ask Art. I have a question about you again. You had mentioned some of the mental challenges, but then I want to shift us for a moment and start talking about how what got you through. And Brandon, you'd mentioned like community a lot, and, and maybe like friendship, support, other people who get it have gotten you through. But uh, we'll see. So Art, can you just mention a few of the things when you said it's a mental battle, not just a physical battle? What were some of those things either you've experienced or I know you're an advocate. You talk to lots of other people living with vascular that they've shared with you yeah like like i was saying before I, I was you know active person never got sick um and then it was like wow this is like all you know shocking i'd be the you know the last person to think that it'd either be on the couch or on the bed and just literally have to crawl from you know one one part of the house uh and, and not sure if and when and how i'd be able to get up and i think really I think the 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 mental breakdown for me was just feeling alone and isolated because you have to remember this is not a cold or a flu that's going to linger for a couple of weeks now this is you know something you're going to have the you know the rest the balance of your life um I think really a turning point for me was just really uh, having that opportunity to connect with some vasculitis patients and like Brandon was saying you know this community is great and that you're able to you know pick up the phone and 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 make a call uh back in the fall of 2018, uh, the uh, Vasculitis Foundation was doing uh, some regional uh, symposiums and I went out here in UCLA and that was my first opportunity to connect with some patients in person, um, made some connections and really just hit it off with a lot of uh, um, patients. Um, I've often said, you know, uh, I refer to this disease uh, with uh, with the regards of patients, but it's also a lot of family members and caregivers that I've had to meet too that, um, have just been an, as an important as the patients them, themselves. And I one, the one thing I usually tell uh, newly diagnosed patients, it's a process, it's gonna be different for everybody. There's no right or wrong answer, you know, you know go at your own pace. Um, if, if someone, you know, got into remission uh, in six months and you're still not, it's gonna be different for, for everyone. I'm just now, you know, I'm down just to two medications. It took me, gosh, uh, a good, I want to say three, four years to get off prednisone. It took me two years to go from 10 to zero. At one point, I never thought I'd get off that, you know, medication. So uh, at this point, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm in remission, but I think my disease is very quiet. I'm looking forward to maybe in the next six months getting off these last two drugs and, you know, we'll see, we'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll go from there. I mean, look at Kathy, she said she was, you know, in remission for nine years and then, you know, it came back. So, um, and then, like I said before, there's not a day that goes by that um, I'm reminded of this disease, but it won't stop me from, you know, going out that front door and, and doing whatever um, I, I have planned for that day, whether it's going out for a run, going to work, or just spending time with, with my family. Yeah. Uh, I, Jen, I guess this brings me back to you, because as I'm sitting listening to each of these stories and reading things in the chat, uh, I want to go back to what you said about just getting through the next five minutes. Do you, can you talk a little bit about that or how you, how you did that, how you sat in that discomfort and just took it five minutes at a time? Well, I mean, first of all, I didn't have the energy or the strength to actually do anything else beyond sit there for five minutes. So, mm -hmm. you know, there was an incredible clarity and focus because that's where it was. And it taught me how to slow down and to really laser focus on what was best for me because my number one priority was my health. And it was number two and number three and number four, because that's all I had, right? So I would ask myself, is this good for my vasculitis or is it bad for my vasculitis? Should I do this or should I not do this? So the, the clarity that I had about making decisions became very simple and clear for me. And if it's either hell yes, you do it. And if it's hell no, the answer is no, I'm not doing it. So it was very freeing to be able to do that. And I have to remind myself now when life gets busy and all that to go back to that place because I learned so much when I was there. And, you know, I'm a researcher, so everything's uncertain. You never know what the experiment is going to show. And sometimes it doesn't work and you do it again. So I was kind of used to the uncertainty, not in my own life. So I just used two words right now. Add that to the end of the sentence. I can't do this right now. I'm never going to be able to do well right now. OK, because it's actually true about life and vasculitis just amplifies that for you. 
Yeah, right now, those are powerful words. Uh, I want to remind people that you can put questions because I'm going to open it up to questions from the audience momentarily. So questions in our Q&A box or if you want to put them in the chat, but ideally they go in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. That would be wonderful. Um, but before we do that, Stacey, do you want to, you know, given the work that you do now, do you want to add on to anything that Jen said or answer that question your own way? Oh, I, I think it's it's great what Jen mentioned. And that's something I think I had to learn. Um, I also had a flair um, as a young mom, like when I, my kids were young, they were, I had two toddlers and my disease went out of remission for the first time. And it was such a busy time. And my way of coping previously when I was, you know, just responsible for me didn't really work now that I was a mom. So it's like, what do I need to do right now to get through this? And who do I need to rely on? And how do I get all of these things done? Uh, and so I had to shift my approach. And I think it's it's key to be flexible. You know, what works at one point in time might not work in the future. It doesn't mean it was the wrong choice back then. It just means you have to kind of adapt to the current circumstance. And that's okay. Yeah, so it sounds like you're giving yourself a sense of grace too. Like, And it could be flexible and not to... Uh, like the poison that is self-judgment not to uh yeah it's hard yeah. but it yeah. you know doesn't mean you can't do it um oh I see Kathy you raised your hand cool. yeah uh I I did just want to say something similar and just for all the people I'm reading some of the notes in the chat and stuff and and I and the um losing so much of yourself and losing hope and all those things. And I just want you to know, I mean, I also met a friend early in my diagnosis who had the exact same thing as me because I went to a vasculitis foundation symposium and she and I have kept, I think she's in this meeting. I think she's watching. She and I have kept up all these years and we actually go to her appointments together. She flies in from Florida and I take her to our same doctor actually Brandon and I go to the same doctor because we live kind of close to each other. And um, I think one of the things that I just want to say is because I'm 15 years into this, that it, and, and I, and they all know, I, I tell people I represent the older crew here. Um, I'm 65 now. So I, I thought in my younger years that I was going to be the little old lady in the gym working out harder than everybody else. <laughs> I, I really thought I, that was going to be my claim to fame, you know, and, and that was apparently important to my self-image and it's just not anymore. <laughs> you know, I had moon face. I keep seeing that comment in, in the chat, moon face and the hump on the back of my neck, which I have, and the fat pads on my legs, which I have, um, they just became not as important. I mean, Brandon was training for the Olympics. He, he had to pivot, as they say. You know, Art's a great runner. He, you just ran a half marathon, didn't you, Art? Yeah. So it, it's you pivot. You sometimes you can't walk to the mailbox, and and sometimes you can ride a bike, an e-bike, twelve miles, and then turn the power assist on and go the other twenty with your husband. <laughs> you know, it 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 does get better. You just. My, I have a best friend that I walk with and she is so tolerant of me right now. We were walking four to five miles a day um, last summer and I can make it about a mile and a half as of yesterday. So, you know, just pivot. Mm, pivot is such a great word. Yeah, just pivot. Um, some people in the, the chat have been asking, like, when you get this diagnosis, how do you how do you tell people that tell people close to you? Uh, does anyone want to talk about that? Go ahead, Brandon. Um, I have seen all of it. You know, I've been doing a lot of patient outreach work myself for the last, you know, what is it? Six or seven years now. And I've been on both sides of it. I've, I, I suffered in silence for a very long time, you know, getting diagnosed in college, it was not necessarily something you really kind of want to talk about. And, and like, and like kind of the opposite of, of Heather, she had a really good support network around her. I, I didn't, you know, I was mainly surrounded by a bunch of other athletes and, um, you know, that didn't really understand what I was going through. And I certainly didn't help it. 
um, with my attitude and how I was managing and, and, and dealing with it. Uh, but then later, like after I got diagnosed and, and got to the point, it's just like, I almost didn't want to talk about it. Like it wasn't an excuse. I didn't want to share. I didn't want to open up. And, you know, it was really all that suffering and silence that like ultimately led me to kind of like deciding to share a little bit more about it. Um, and then through the years after opening up and sharing and, you know, having this, this campaign, this awareness campaign, it sort of then be kind of became my identity uh, in a way. And now that, you know, I, I've been through, you know, three other relapses and, since I got diagnosed in 2012, 2013, and 2017, right after I had the, the best running of my life. So, uh, you know, I, it, the vasculitis just sort of then became the identity that I, yes, I was a runner. Yes, I was all these other hats that I wore, but like it became my identity. And now sort of in life, it's just like, I've, I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where I can, I can start to fill it with some other things. Um, but always kind of at the back of your head is that, is that worry. And, and I say that because it's like, I've, I've, I've lived all of it. I've talked with so many patients on either sides of it. Like, you know, I, there's a couple of patients that I talk to that literally I'm the only person outside of their immediate family that know. And then, you know, all you have to do is type my name into Google and vasculitis comes up. And so, uh, um, and I talk with a lot of parents that want their kids to kind of share more and talk more. Uh, but you've got to find your own comfort level with it. And there's not a right or wrong answer as long as you're not suffering. If you're suffering, then you need to get help and you need to, you know, figure out what you can do to to release some of that mental anguish and the the demons that sort of come with all of this. Uh, but um, there's not a right, you know, I don't believe there's a right or wrong a answer to to that and like how you want to share and, and open up because that, that really is, it's, it's our own personal journeys. And we, you know, as long as it's not causing you a problem by not sharing and opening up, then, you know, you know, to each his own, but um, you know, I, I don't really think that there's a, a right or wrong answer to, to how you go about it and who has to know. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really like that you talked about vasculitis at certain points, even as an advocate, like in a good way, becoming part of your identity and now trying to add more fullness to it. Because I think whether it's vasculitis or other chronic diseases, you go to appointments all the time, you're paying, like art, you said at the beginning, there's not a day where it doesn't cross your mind or impact you in some way. And so you can feel like your world revolves around it. And so important to remember who you are beyond a diagnosis. Of course, it's fair not to dismiss it, not to, you know, take that away and all these other things. Stacey, you wanted to add? Yeah, just adding in so, some language that I've found helpful and it may not be helpful to others, but it's a part of who each of us are. It's, it's not all of it. It's, it's part and, and making space for that and kind of think of it as like a conference table. We all have these like myriad of parts and they can all sit there and make decisions together about, you know, our goals for our career and family and, you know, taking care of our health and the things we're interested in. And they can all participate in the conversation. And I think it's really important to have that personally. And I've found that works really well with others too. So, you know, it doesn't have to revolve completely around the diagnosis all the time. There's certain times where managing illness is the most important, as Jen was talking about, and it has to be so that you can get back to the other things you want to do. Mm. But it doesn't always have to be front and center. It's it's one of the voices at the, the conference table, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's a part. Mm. Yeah. Heather, you want to add? Yeah, I pretty much echo what um, a lot of my um, peers have said here today. And I just, uh, a quote comes to mind that uh, I, I've heard before. And it said, so living with chronic or mental illness may seem like being in a, stuck in a maze with no clear path out. But those who are resilient and have willpower are like the explorers with a map and a compass. They keep moving forward, trying new paths and finding the way out, even when the journey is tough. And so for me, this really resonates. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually really similar to Brandon in, in that I suffer in silence also. Although I have a good support system around me, I don't tend to use them because I don't like reaching out for help. I don't like, you know, feeling weak or helpless. Um, I try to always tough it out. Um, 
and you know, when people ask, Hey, Heather, how are you doing today? You know, and I, and I sort of look fine. Uh, but on the inside, I'm, I'm, I'm not. And, um, you know, you just say good, but you know, and I, you really, you're having like crippling anxiety where you couldn't leave the bed for three hours. Um, or you had a panic attack a couple minutes before you had to jump on a zoom call and, and, you know, nobody knows. And so, you know, you just say good, or I'm doing fine just because you don't want to get into all that. But, um, yeah, um, you really just, you learn to kind of get like people have mentioned here, get to a comfort level where you share, um, what you feel like is needed. I have people who work with me for two years and never knew that I had vasculitis until about a month ago, <laughs> just because I didn't want to share that, you know, I didn't want my work, um, to be like centered around anything. Um, you know, if I, I just never want to like get to define me, I guess, in, in a certain way. And so I didn't, I felt like not saying something, uh, would put me just like everybody else. I can, I can sort of be like everybody else still. Um, and so when, when people, my coworkers finally found out, they were like, wow, you, you, and you do all this. And so, I'm just like, I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's just kind of for me, it's, it feels like a no brainer, but, you know, to other people, I would have had the support there if I had only reached out. And so that's something I learned is just to, now I know to reach out um, in advance and be proactive because eventually, you know, whether it be with work or or university or even your friends, you will need support um, at one point or another. And so learning to reach out and how to ask for help early on is definitely really important. Um, and so that's something that for me changed in terms of like a personality trait is, is depending on people. Um, but yeah, everyone has said really great stuff here today. So, um, I'm I'm so glad you, you said that and that at such a young age, you're learning that leaning on people and asking for help is a strength and not a weakness. It takes a lot to be able to be vulnerable and to trust someone else and to have that connection. And so I am really grateful that you shared that. And in our remaining few minutes, I actually did want to mention you, Heather, because you have a wonderful podcast for the bath that you host for the Vasculitis Foundation that's new called Vasculitis Voices. Um, Maybe I'm calling on my colleague, Jen, wages, maybe she can put the link to it in the chat (laughs) so people can find it. Um, But on a recent episode, you interviewed Amy, and Amy was talking something about uh, how it's not just what vasculitis has done to her, but what, um, what did she say? It's, uh, what is vasculitis, uh, I'm sorry, hold on, (laughs) looking for the things vasculitis has done for me and not just to me. And so maybe blessing is too strong of a word, and this is, vasculitis is never asked for. Um, we're not saying like, oh, I'm so glad, you know, so glad you had it. Cause you like, that's not what I'm trying to say, but have you found when you have to face something hard that maybe there's spaces where you've grown from it or what it's done, um, you know, for you, not just to you. And that, that doesn't have to be for Heather. I mean, Heather, you're welcome to share, but if anyone wants to, to touch on that. Um, yeah, I mean, Amy is incredible. I'm not sure if anybody's had a chance to hear her story, but it really is a story of resilience um, an absolute willpower. And, you know, it was, it's really interesting getting to hear everybody's perspectives. Cause you know, when she mentioned that I was like, you know, you know, that's such a good, um, way to put it. Um, you know, thinking about how it's changed your life, maybe for a better way, you know, for me, um, I, my dream was to be on Capitol Hill before. Um, and that's something I had worked towards for years. Um, you know, like having a bill passed in the Florida state house, Uh, was a goal of mine. And I actually got a bill sponsored that I had created called HB 1131, which aimed to reduce recidivism and increase employment for those uh, recently incarcerated. And so I worked with the United Nations think tanks, uh, you know, aiding and helping children in Vietnam learn English. Um, And so doing all that sort of heavy lifting and work uh, throughout my, um, you know, university years and, and working towards the goal on Capitol Hill, which was and to finally have a, a dream offer um, and then having to turn it down because of a severe flare um, was, you know, really a tough moment. Um, but, you know, my dream was to be on Capitol Hill, you know, lawmaking, creating equitable policy. Um, but, you know, having to sort of defer and then turn it down um, was really difficult. Um, I, I didn't, I felt lost. I thought, you know, all those years I had worked so hard kind of trying to be perfect at every little thing to, to land that, you know, offer. And, um, 
I kind of didn't know what to do. You know, I kind of felt like I had wasted all that time um, and I didn't enjoy other things that I could have. Um, but, you know, like Amy mentioned, uh, things come out of it. So for me, I found new goals and purpose and the podcast was one of them. I'm um, getting to hear other people's stories is absolutely incredible. It actually helps me a lot myself because, you know, you really hear that you're not alone. You're not an oddity. Nothing's wrong with you specifically, especially when you're dealing with mental health issues. Um, you, you can definitely feel like an, an outlier um, of some sort, but just hearing other people's experience and, and with the medications and the disease uh, lets me know, and that hopefully everybody else, that you're really not alone. Um, so, you know, having a chance to do that, um, I definitely think was a, was a calling of some sort. Um, so. Mm. Yeah, we're definitely stronger and more resilient together. Uh, Stacy, maybe do you want to close this out here? Okay. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I, I too can relate to that. And, you know, I, I lived with this illness for a long time and worked towards a goal. And I had my dream job and my two kids and my house and my husband and everything. And with a flare, I did have to quit. And it meant I was starting from scratch and I didn't know what to do. So I ended up building my own business to have the flexibility. And I can't imagine not having what I have now. I'm so happy. So sometimes it's our lowest points that allow us to like look around and like someone mentioned earlier, find that other path that actually works out better. And that's where I'm at. And I, I think some others here who've spoke today have found that too. I love that find the other path and also almost finding the spaces of light that exist in spaces that might feel so, so dark sometimes. Um, so I just want to thank each of our, our panelists, our Victory Over Vasculitis ambassadors for being here, for being brave and courageous and sharing, for being honest um, and for helping people feel less alone. Um, I really appreciate you and everyone for showing up tonight on a Monday night. I know there are only, there's so many things always drawing at our attention. So the fact that you've chosen to be here with us means a lot. So thank you for your time and attention and all your care and your lovely comments throughout this whole thing in the chat. Um, with that, I will let you all go. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday.